This one's going to be a little frustrating. The answer choices uh, are clearly telling us to think about punctuation. And what I notice is that two of our choices have a semicolon. And we need to remember that a semicolon in most cases is used to separate two complete sentences. So that would be the first thing I'd try to check. It's just like, where do we have complete sentences? Do we have things that are kind of interrupting and then we can only use commas? Do we have like extra clauses that only need commas? But if it's a sentence that could stand on its own, we're gonna need the semicolon to kind of act like a period to separate things. Now, whether or not the however is on the first side of the period or the second side, that's another pro problem that we'll deal with if we get to it. But let's first look at just how this thing is built. So for the sake of thinking exclusively about sentences, I'm gonna start right here with Scott Heron, which is sentence two, because that first sentence is kind of over, right? This part I'm gonna maybe need to worry about later, but for now I'm just thinking about how it's built. So let's look at that and let's highlight things that we think are sentences. Scott Heron himself resisted the Godfather nickname. Okay, that's, that's a sentence. I could put a little period there. So, so far so good. Godfather, I'll just highlight A. Um, then I'm gonna skip however, right? Because this can have multiple functions, but no matter what, it's always like an extra thing. So let's just focus on the, the next part. Feeling that it didn't encapsulate his devotion to the broader African-American blues music tradition, as well as bluesologist, the monarchy, moniker he preferred. Wow, that's a lot. Let me read that again. Feeling that it didn't encapsulate his devotion to the broader African-American blues music tradition, as well as bluesologist, the monarchy, monar moniker, he preferred. Wow, that's hard to say. Uh, so that's tricky, um, but that is not a sentence. So there's no subject in here. For something to be a sentence, it needs to have a subject and a verb. A, a, a noun has to do an action. Um, we don't have that. The, the beginning part kind of feels like a verb, um, but it's mostly describing Scott Heron. So it's an extra clause that is providing a little bit more information, but it could not stand alone as its own clause. And the reason this is so hard is it's hard to pronounce some of these things, but also it's very long. In fact, it's longer than the green. It's longer than the part that is just a, its own sentence that could stand alone. And so that's, that's what makes these difficult is length has nothing to do with sentence structure. Uh, long things can be sentences and long things can be extra clauses and short things can be sentences. So it's very confusing sometimes. Um, so this tells me, that I don't need the semicolon. So B and D are gone. A semicolon is not gonna be able to join an extra clause. It, it's, we're, we're okay just using a comma. The question then is, do I need one comma or do I need two? Well, this is obviously gonna be two. And the reason is that the word however is a very special kind of um, connector word. It, it's similar to the word but. In fact, when we get into the transition questions, you'll often hear me just say that, that however is, a, is, is the word but. But structurally, it doesn't behave the same way. So when we use the word but, sometimes we use a comma um, and then the word but to kind of move into the next clause. Uh, that's because but is a conjunction. Here, however, is kind of a fancier conjunction. It doesn't quite fit in that same category, and so it has different ways of, of connecting things. In this case, it's also not functioning like a connector. It's not connecting two sentences. It's interrupting the one sentence that we have, right? We only have that green as a sentence, and the other pink part is just an extra clause. So we need the two commas to just insert this however, kind of, you know, just to just to kind of get that idea in there, but we very quickly kind of return back to the main sentence. And I think it'll make more sense if we go back and look at sentence one, which I kind of skipped over. So let me do that just to really clarify it. Journalists have dubbed Gil Scott Heron the godfather of rap, a title that has appeared in hundreds of articles about him since the 1990s. So it's saying that he it has this nickname, right? It's a very popular nickname. Scott Heron himself resisted the godfather nickname. Right, so there, that's clearly the opposite of what they're saying, right? They just started by saying nickname popular or good, right? It's positive. Now, though, he's resisting the nickname. So if I were writing this, here's what I would say. Journalists have dubbed Gil Scott Heron the godfather of rap, a title that has appeared in hundreds of articles about him since the 1990s. However, comma, Scott Heron himself resisted the godfather nickname feeling that it didn't encapsulate his devotion to the broader African-American blues music tradition as well as bluesologist, the moniker he preferred.
I still feel like I'm not saying that right. Um, so the, uh, most of us would put the words like however at the beginning of our sentence. And here though, they're just kind of putting in the middle because they want to test whether or not you know how it's functioning. So we can do that. We can kind of move those words throughout a sentence, but no matter what, we really need commas to separate it from everything going on around it because it just doesn't behave like it were, it doesn't fit with any of those pieces. It is itself its own piece, and so you need the commas to separate that piece out. It's definitely confusing, and there will be cases where however is used more like choice D or more like choice B, so you've gotta get good at knowing the difference because all the choices are gonna be available to you in pretty much every time they test this.